Hey guys! Today we're going to be making these cute and yummy looking heart shaped bun cakes as well as a cooling rack so I really hope you'll enjoy. Also, if you like these videos definitely give the video a thumbs up and if you have any food requests feel free to leave them in the comments. I first took a ball of some scrap clay, flattened it slightly and then marked off and cut out a heart shape. You want to make sure to make the side slightly slanted. The reason why I'm using scrap clay for this is because I want to make a mold. If you wanted to, you could definitely hand sculpt each individual one, but because you want these to look like they've been baked in a pan, this to me is the best option. I then just use my blade to smooth out all the edges. There are different ways you can make the pattern or the edges. For this one I chose to use a pointy dotting tool. I first went over it once to just mark out where I wanted the lines and then I went over it again to define them. I know I'm going to sound like a broken record if I'm going to say this in every single video but if you have any questions about the tools and materials I use, I will link my video about it in the info box. Lastly, I used a silicone tool to smooth out the top just a bit. Next, you want to roll out a really thin snake of clay and place it around the bottom. Once I was done, I pre-baked. I then made a mold and used a light dough color to make the four cakes. For the texture, I like to start off with just using a toothbrush and if you want to keep this super simple, you can use just the toothbrush. I then used a fine needle tool to add texture to the entire cake. The reason why I don't add the texture before making the mold so that the mold has the texture is because it's not going to be as defined and not going to look as detailed. If you wanted to, you could get away with adding texture and then making a mold from that. But then again, you can might as well just do with the toothbrush. After adding texture, I pre-baked one more time before adding the shading. For the shading, I first used a few shades of soft pastel and I applied these with a wet or damp brush. Starting out with the lighter shades and then moving towards the darker shades.
I then sealed that with a matte glaze. And then added the final touches using acrylic paint. For the icing, I mixed TLS and white acrylic paint, and the reason why I do this is because, as I mentioned in my last video, the paint helps give the TLS a slightly different texture than you would achieve if you mixed it with soft pastel or something like that. And so for the icing, when you bake it and you still have some of the moisture from the paint, it is going to make the TLS kind of bubble up just a bit, and it just gives a really, really nice texture. Finally, you want to add just a small amount of gloss glaze. To make the cooling rag, you're going to need some soldering supplies, so you're going to need a heat-proof surface. You're going to need some sort of soldering iron. I'm going to be using my VersaTip by Dremel. You're going to need your solder, wire that you can solder, I'm using brass, any flux based product of your choice, and then you're also going to need a couple of pairs of tweezers or helping hands, something to hold on to hot stuff. Because I wanted the cooling rack to be silver colored and not brass or copper, I first added flux to my wire and then picked up some solder and applied it to give it kind of like a plating. Shape one piece of wire to form either a circle, square, rectangle, or whatever you want. Close up the gap and then use small pieces of wire to make the grid itself. If you've seen any of the videos where I make miniature furniture from metal, you'll usually see me using a torch for soldering. For furniture, I definitely mostly prefer using the torch because it's faster to heat up the metal that way, but for something like this that is mainly constructed out of thin wire, the soldering iron is really the best way to go. I then bend three pieces of wire to form the feet and solder these in place as well. Finally, I just added a piece of parchment paper and added some acrylic paint. I know it says antiquing medium on the bottle, but really it's just a fancy word for watered down paint. Really hope you enjoyed, and as I mentioned, if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up. Let me know what you want to see in upcoming videos. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.